On today's video, we 86 a sway bar. Stay tuned. Welcome back and or to the channel. Today we are getting started on the frame protection coating that we are putting on the Crimson 5.7. In order to do that process, there are a few things that I want to take out of the way. A few items that we are going to paint to add protection to. Some of them we're going to add a rust encapsulator to, followed by a bed liner. This is all part of the process of doing this. And through this, we're going to see kind of how they all stack up and, and go together. I'm going to try to do this as a full series straight together. But today, the first process is to get this sway bar out of the way and to get any other small components out that we may want to do. Now, in a previous video, I stated how I'm going to show this. I'm going to break this up into a series of videos. So the first one is going to basically be of the front end here that you see. Then we're going to move to the middle. And the frame protection, the protection underneath the body, what we're going to do to kind of protect that so that we don't have any more issues. And then lastly will be the back of the vehicle where we will drop the spare tire, we will pull the rear shocks, and at that time I'll be making a decision on if I'm going to go with a different style shock. That may be something coming up that I'm in the works on trying to figure out which way I'm going to go with it that may change what I need to do to my front suspension as well. When I do that, there'll be a, probably a whole video dedicated to what that's going to do to my suspension and what options I have after I do that. But today is a sway bar, and we're going to see if there's any other smaller components that we can get out of the way. I'm still tossed up on whether or not I'm going to pull my fender liners here, my wheel liners. Kind of tossed up, I'm not pulling them just because of the fact that there is so much that I could wind up taking apart on this vehicle that I don't want to necessarily take apart unless I need to. Some of it is stuff that has to come apart because either the parts are going to get painted or other things are going to come up. And as we do those, I'll show you which areas to watch out for, what we're going to be covering up so that we don't get paint on it, and what's the point of trying to keep this all clean. So let's get started on the sway bar and get you down to where you can actually see what's going on. Okay, so as you can see the sway bar in the picture here, we've got uh, one nut up here that I have to take off and one down below there that I have to take off. But I'm gonna work on the top one first here. And what I'll need to take this apart And you have to look because each sway bar may be different based on where you bought the sway bar from. But you will have a 17 millimeter on top and a 15 for the actual holding the bar so it doesn't turn. And what you want to do is just turn it loose to where you know that it's starting to come loose. And then you can switch over to like a ratcheting style wrench. This is just a fixed uh, six sided so I don't round anything off if I'm breaking bolts loose. Once I know it's loose, I can just go in with a ratcheting style and I can just loosen this all the way up. And I wanna take it all the way off and pull my grommets out. And if it's not turning, you don't need to hold it with the 15. You can just take the nut off. Now this will be a locking nut on here, so you do need to spin it all the way off. It's not gonna come off with your fingers. You won't be able to get it off with your fingers until you've got it almost to the top. And then you can take it off that way. There's a washer on the top that compresses the rubber grommet. So you want to pull that rubber grommet. 
And now this side is loose, so what I'm going to do is go to the other side. And I'm going to do that same process on the other side. All right, now that you've pulled both sides off, what you're going to want to do is make sure you keep your grommets and everything safe. Don't mix them up from left to right. Leave them both on the same side that you took them off on. What we're going to do is loosen up the main bolts that hold the sway bar, which are right there. We're going to, there'll be two on each side. There'll be two here and two on the other side. We're going to take those off and then this sway bar will come off in our hands. Once the sway bar is out, we can then go ahead and put our grommets back on to our sway bar here. That way we keep them together. Just in case we have to go a few weeks before we get around to actually putting this all back together, you want to keep those components together so you don't lose anything. What you're going to have is a 15 millimeter head bolt. And like I said, you're going to have two of them. So what you do is make sure you got a socket that fits on there tight. For me, 15 millimeter fits on nice and tight. Make sure my impact's in reverse and let's get these out of here. tell there's a lot of rust there a lot of corrosion so backing it out don't just crank on it try to break up the impacts a little bit so you don't have any issues the top one came loose really easy So with those four out, all that's really holding the sway bar into place is a little bit of corrosion around these mounting points. So all you're gonna do, is just kinda tug on it and it's gonna fall away just like that. And then you lift it up out of the way and set it down. Now with the sway bar down, we're gonna take the time to go through and remove a few of the bushings on them. We're gonna prep this so that we can actually get ready to paint this particular part because we are going to paint this. So we'll prep it a little bit. I'll kind of show you that process. And this will be similar to what we're going to do throughout the frame as we keep going here. Okay, what I did is I took the time to pull the sway bar out. I'm just going back now and I'm installing these grommets back the way they were when I first took them apart. You don't have to thread them all the way down. You don't have to take the end link all the way off if you don't want to or if it's not damaged. This end link is brand new. When I bought this truck, I had to put new end links in it because I had to put lower A-arms on it because I was attempting to do a leveling kit on the truck. Apparently, the leveling kit that I bought was not a good one. And I'm not one to trash talk a, a name, but there is one out there that they are just selling blocks that are not a very good design. I believe I featured them in my first video. If not, I did feature them in other videos. But these are nothing more than a strut spacer. All they do is add a leveling kit to a vehicle by adding this as a leveling kit block for the vehicle. And the problem with these, after I had them installed, they started to rub on the inside because this pedestal was not able to sit tight up underneath and what it did was it kicked this to one side or to the other to where they couldn't even do an alignment on the vehicle this threw the alignment off so bad 
that they couldn't do anything with it. I am deciding what I want to do with these. Just because of the design of them, they're not going to work properly. So I'm deciding if I should cut them up, if I should just get rid of them, or if I'm going to use them as a template for whatever I might wind up going with. And if I can't find exactly what I want, then I'm going to need a template. And this might give me a good template to work with. So I'm not too eager to just chuck them out the window yet and just say, I don't need you. But I am at the point that, uh, that I want to make sure that whatever I do go with, I won't have this problem. And this is where it gets into buying good leveling kits and where it pays the, for a good suspension lift. If you try to go cheap, I think these were like 40 or 50 bucks. And they don't have the engineering in them to make them work properly. So it's pretty much a waste of 50 bucks. Now the only thing that you could do is say, okay, well, hey, I wasted 50 bucks, but maybe if I can find a machine shop or somebody that can take and mill half this bracket out and cut the angles in here that I need, then maybe I can still use this as a leveling kit. And that's the only thing you can really do is, can I modify these to make them work? And if you can't, then you're forced to go with a whole new setup. And that's kind of where I'm at with this. But that'll get into when we actually start getting the other set up for the rear and I figure out if I have to do something for the front. But when you put this back together, make sure you put the rubber grommets the way they belong on there. And I did toss my bolts back in to my, for my front sway bar. Like I said, the reason I did that, I will have to take the bolts back out when I put the frame protection on, but I did that so I don't lose the bolts for the time being. But I'm gonna dig the sway bar out and we're gonna take the grommets off. Here's our sway bar. There are grommets that we're gonna to wanna to take off if we're going to prep this for doing any kind of painting with it or any kind of protection coating that we wanna put on it. What we're gonna do is just take and pound the brackets off, slide the rubber bushings off, Oh, Dodge, you are tricky. Okay, they have created a small rubber tab. So what they did is they created a small rubber tab and simply pounding this bushing off is not gonna be that easy. So what we're gonna do, is set the block, or set some blocks underneath the sway bar. And this is designed to just get this up and out of the way. That one came off. What we gotta do is just tap it with a hammer and hold the one end down like I just did. I will take those brackets off. Now we still have the grommets here. And these grommets are an all one piece solid design. So what we're gonna have to do when we go to do whatever we want to this sway bar, we're going to have to work around those rubber bushings because I don't want to cut them off and have to buy new bushings. They're, there's nothing wrong with them. They're still in really great shape. They're holding pressure like they should, so we don't have to cut them off. If you cut them off, you're going to risk damaging them because some of these are designed that they're meant to slip over, and that's all that they do. Apparently on Dodge, this is how they're designed. Is they're, they're designed to slide over the end. And if you've got a lot of rust and corrosion here, trying to slide these off, 
you might damage the bushing. Now my truck doesn't have very many miles on it, so I'm able to slide them off. I am going to clean these up and probably put some uh, lubrication on them when I go to put them back in. But there is no slit in them. And where this rides on this sway bar here, you can see the shiny part right here. You don't want you don't want to put paint on that spot. That would be a bad spot to put paint because it's going to hold on to that rubber bushing and not allow that suspension to articulate like it should. So that spot we are going to tape off when we go to prep this sway bar for what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and pull the other side off here. Like I said, we just rotate it around. But if your bar is too rusty, just leave them on there. Just tape around them. Because that's better than taking, trying to take them off and wreck them. Like I said, there's a lot of buildup in them. So I'm going to be taking the time to clean them up. And I would just clean these up with basically a, a soap and water. I would not try to use brake cleaner or anything else that could deteriorate this rubber. It's better to not destroy this than to try to get carried away and get crazy with a bunch of crazy solvents that wind up eating up the rubber. But now that we got our sway bar out, the only thing left is to remove any factory stickers that may be on it. Stuff that will deter us from being able to prep and paint this particular part. I will go through a step of how to do this in a separate video because it does take a little bit of time to set this up to be able to prep this. And we still have to pull our struts out of our front so that we can get that going. So it's kind of a, a glimpse on what's coming up. But I'd like to say thank you for watching this video. Please shoot this video a like, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one.